Hi everyone and welcome to my live creative time today. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Paper Craft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I have got a very special project for you today. Um, but before we get on to that, we have a few other things to, um, or I have a few other things to share with you first before we get on to our project for today. So, um, let me just bring up this, uh, live on my other devices so that I can see all of your comments there. So bear with me two secs while we do that, while everyone is jumping on. Hmm. Huh, that's, oh, it is working. Okay. It was a bit delayed. And mute that one. And I need to refresh my page. <laughs> we'll get there. It takes it takes a moment to get it all set up. Oh, there we go. I thought I had muted that, but I hadn't as it turned out. There we go. All right. Hey, Brenton, how are you today? Great to have you with me again this week. Always lovely to have friends joining me. Um, how was your weekend? What did you get up to? Anything interesting? Any bushwalking this weekend? Well, the weekend just gone, I should say. Um, yeah, let me know what you got up to. So we did, um, we did, now let me think, what did I have? Saturday, I had my um, team gathering, which was lovely. And um, we got together, um, some of my team members and I got together for our monthly um, team gathering and um, after we have our, our meeting portion then I we have some crafting time together which is always fun and one of our team members shared with us how to make a special um, well not a special but a, a fun fold card that I'd not made before and so um, I'm going to be sharing that um, in the next couple of weeks not today though in the next couple of weeks I'll make one of those and share that with you um, that was really awesome hey Lisa how are you great to have you with us today um, yeah, so that was really fun on Saturday, always fun sharing time with my team and we have, um, good chats and a good time together and fun creating together. So it's always lots of fun. Um, and then on Sunday, potted around and did some more clearing out. Well, actually Amber mainly did it. The, another shelf in the pantry which is good so now we've just got the very top one and the very lowest one which I need help with because I can't reach them easily um, but yes yeah, so we've got another shelf organized in the pantry which is awesome Amber pulled all those things out and then I just helped sort a few things and color a few things and then she um, put them all back in so that was really good and um and then I was playing last night very late last night with what, well, early hours of this morning, really, <laughs> with what we're going to be creating today. So I can't wait to share that with you. Um, and was something else I did? Oh, no, Amber did. Amber made a beautiful trifle. Yum, yum. We haven't had trifle. I used to make trifle all the time, and I haven't made it for years and years and years. But we made a gluten-free, well, Amber made a gluten-free um, version, gluten-free, dairy-free trifle. So it's so delicious. So we've been eating that up. It's super, super yummy. Anybody else love trifle? Some of you from overseas might not even know what trifle is. You might call it something else. I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, you had the weekend off, Brendan. Brenton. Um, so just card making and Easter basket making. Oh, that sounds cool. Hey, Rose, how are you? Great to have you here today. Hey, Rose, happy birthday. It's Rose's birthday today. Hope you don't mind me sharing that, Rose. Um, but yeah, I hope you're having a lovely, lovely day. And thank you for spending time with us this afternoon. Very special. I've got a beautiful project today to share with you. Um, I'm going to tell you more about that in a minute, though. I don't want to give too much away just yet. But I did, in my advertisement this morning for today's live, I did let you know that it was going to be highlighting a special little puppy girl. So um, I can't wait to, to um, share that with you today. But before we get on to that, let me just sh uh, share with you a few other quick things. Um, online exclusives are now live. If you have not been on social media in the last few days, then maybe you haven't heard this yet. 
but it has been everywhere in social media. <laughs> so Stampin' Up! has got a new section in the online store called, called Online Exclusives. And there are some brand new products in there, um, which are beautiful. Now also too, there are also some um, returning products in there as well. We've got our two inch circle punch and our one and three quarter inch circle punch, which is super awesome. Um, everyone is so excited that those circle punches have come back. Hopefully they'll bring more back as well. Hopefully they'll bring back some of the smaller ones too. I kept all my circle punches, so hopefully they'll all make an appearance <laughs> at some point. Um, but yes, check those, check out the online store, um, beautiful new products. I've been playing with those over the last, um, well, last week and, um, last month as well, because as demonstrators, we always get products early. So we already had some of those products last month and, uh, I've had a little play with those and demonstrated some of those, which was from the, um, Hello Irresistible Suite. This one here. Gorgeous, gorgeous products. If you've missed them, go back and check out my Facebook Live from last week. They are beautiful. Um, yeah, so check those out. Go to the online store, have a look, um, see what's there. There's also some other beautiful products. We've got the um, Rhino Ready bundle with the gorgeous little rhinos. They're so adorable. That one's going to be in my next order. Um, little rhinos with coordinating dies. There's even some awesome um, tree dies in that in that range uh, in the bundle, and they kind of look like um, African Sahara, as if you are on an African safari, like you know those trees you often see. I don't know what sort of trees they're called. Somebody might know. Let me know what types of trees they are. Um, but they look really cool in the die set as well that coordinates with that. There's also some other brand new die sets there's some other beautiful stamp sets um just yeah you have to go to the online store and have a look if um if you're not sure where to find them you can go to my blog which is mandy's papercraftcreations.blogspot.com and click on the shop button that'll take you through to my online store and you can have a little browse there so check that out or you can also get to it from my website which is mandy with a b Dot net. There's a shop now button there too. You can click on that and um, go and have a little browse. And remember to, if you are shopping with me, remember to use my host code. Here's my March host code, E-D-T-Y-U-Z-R-Q. Make sure you use that when you're shopping. Um, before you check out, pop that, um, there's a little space above your online cart that you can put the host code. And with orders over $75, I will send you a thank you gift for shopping with me. So, um, some other things that you'll see in the online exclusives are the kits because the kits are only available online. So there is a section in the online store for the kits collection, but they also are going to show up in the online exclusives because they are an online exclusive. They're not in any catalog. So that's the thing with all of these online exclusive products. Um, you won't find them in any catalog because they're, they're um, just online at um, nowhere else. So this is the brand new kit that's been released for March, the Kaleidoscope kit. This one's gonna be in my next order as well. I love this one, it's so gorgeous. Um, really, I'll hold that up a bit close. I mean, you know, I've printed the copy, so this is on printed on paper, so it's probably not the best quality, but this kit is absolutely gorgeous. And if you loved those um, kaleidoscopes that we had when we were a kid, you know, you look through the little a little tube and you've got all the different colored crystals and when you turn it they all move that's what this kind of looks like so i think that's why i love it because i always love those kaleidoscopes so check those out um now let me have a oh kevin's here hey kevin how you going <laughs> great to have you here come to have a sneaky peek at what i'm creating <laughs> um let's see uh I'm just checking other comments. Oh, your favorite's husband. Oh, sorry. Your husband's favorite dessert is trifle rose. Oh, there you go. That's good. It's so yummy. Oh, my goodness. And we kind of thought, oh, it's going to be too sweet. Like, we'll just have a little bit. But it wasn't. It wasn't too sweet at all. And so we've been eating quite large servings and having a couple of those. <laughs> well, yesterday anyway. Um, yeah, it's so, so yummy. 
Um, oh, and Rose said, thank you for your kind wishes. You're welcome. Very, very welcome. Are you doing something special for dinner tonight? You being taken out for dinner? Please tell me you're not cooking dinner tonight. <laughs> uh, um, all right. So the other thing I wanted to let you know before we jump into our project today, because I, I don't want to talk too long today because I think the project might take a little bit of time, is I have a brand new class coming out. It's going to be advertised later today, um, this evening. So you are the first to find out. It is the Playing in the Rain Fun Fold class. This one is going to be beautiful. Well, it is beautiful. The projects are absolutely gorgeous. If you've seen that Playing in the Rain bundle um, or the, the, the suite, um, you'll love this one. This is gorgeous. And all of the projects are Fun Folds. So there's four Fun Fold cards, cards in the class. Registrations are going to close next Tuesday, the 14th of March. So make sure that you check that out before um, before then. And you can go there. I'm going to pop up the link now. You can go uh, click on the link and go and have a look at the registration form. See what's included. Um, and then um, if you would like to register, then you just fill in the registration form that's at the bottom. Um pop that in there there we go so that's in the comments I'll also put the link um, oh I have to remember to add the link to my link tree Amber remind me to do that um, so that um, the I can put the link then in the description of this video both here on Facebook and over on YouTube thank you all to my YouTube viewers as well thank you so much for coming over to my YouTube channel I forgot to mention that before. Hey, Julie, how are you going? Oh, Julie, you're going to love my project today. So I hope you can stick around. <laughs> oh, you're going out for dinner, Rose? Fantastic. That's good. I'm glad you're not cooking dinner tonight. I'm glad that you get to go out tonight and be spoilt. <laughs> Um, yes, so there's a um, there's a couple of class class options there. So there's a class option, a full class option there, where you'll get um, the products, the kits, uh, the class kits. That is um, the project tutorials with all photos and everything. So um, there's that option. And then if you are um, an overseas uh, from overseas, then there's a PDF version for you as well. Um, so I can sell those PDF. Um, versions to anywhere around the world so check that out all the details will be there in the registration and um, and you can yeah you can have a look there but these fun folds there's there's even some fun folds in here um, that I had never seen pre previously to this class so yeah so check that out there's they're really great projects all right now today Speaking of playing in the rain, that is what we are featuring today. We are featuring the Rain or Shine Suite from the mini catalogue. So this is the mini catalogue. And if you would like a mini catalogue, if you're here in Australia and you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, um, feel free to get in contact with me and request a catalogue. In fact, I have a link for that too. Let me put that one up as well. Um, and I would love to get those catalogues out to you. Uh, now let me see catalog 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 request there we go we'll get that one I'll put that link in the comments and also too um, I just realized as well I do have a direct link for the online exclusives so I will put that direct oh, I should put that one on my link tree too. remind me to do that amber as well because that'll go straight there to um, the online exclusives. I'll put that here in the comments as well and then that way after I finish filming um, you can go back through the comments and grab that link and go straight to have a look at those online exclusives. So when you go to the um, there that's in the comments too when you go to the online store to find those online exclusives there'll be a big advertising banner that will come along across the top of the screen if you click on that it'll take you straight to those online exclusive um, um, page that online exclusive page and it will show you all of the products there all right so getting back to the rain or shine suite this is what we're going to be playing with today and we are going to be creating a scrapbooking layout now I'm a little bit nervous about this because 
It's been 15 years, no, probably more than 15 years since I have done traditional scrapbooking because for a time there I had moved to the pop pocket type memory keeping um, because I didn't have as much time and for a while there I didn't do any scrapbooking at all. I, I hadn't done anything, no memory keeping, no nothing. For years I was just doing cards. Finally got back into a little bit of memory keeping with the, the um, pocket um, style. Um, so this is my first traditional layout. So I've kept it fairly simple because I've been checking out different layouts to see what's on trend now because it's been so long. There's been so many changes in the trends since I was scrapbooking many years ago. Um, so I've kept this one very, very um, simple. But anyway, but that's what we're going to be using um, the products from this suite from the Rain or Shine Suite, but also too, I'm using, I'm actually using a whole heap of other products too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can't wait to share that with you. Um, there are a couple of other things I'm gonna share with you. I'll put the camera down to the desktop first and I'll share with you down there, first of all, um, yeah, the, the product. So I've actually already designed the layout, so don't worry. Not gonna, we're not going to be here all night because I was already up all night designing it. <laughs> well, I was up till very early hours of this morning um, designing it. So I've already designed it, but I'm going to show you how to put it together and show you some little tips and tricks along the way. Um, yeah, so let's jump in. Feel free to keep commenting and chatting with me. Um, if you are watching over on YouTube and you're watching the replay, feel free to leave me comments. And if you're watching the replay here on Facebook, feel free to leave me comments as well. That will be much appreciated. Um, oh, are you going to catch the replay, Kevin? No worries. Um, oh, it's almost midnight there in the US. Yeah, I totally understand. That's all good. Now, actually, before we put the camera down... We have a little visitor today who is our feature, our main feature of the day today for our project. Callie, Callie, do you want to come and say hello? Do you want to come up for cuddles? Come. Oh, she just ran away. <laughs> come. Hello. Do you want to come and say hello to the people? Come. Come on. Come on. Up you come. Up. Let's see. Hopefully she's in a good mood. Here, hello. Hello. Hello, you say hello to everybody. Say hi. Hi. So this is Callie. If you haven't seen Callie before, she has featured in a few of my posts and things like that. I'm just being cautious of moving too much because she gets frightened really easily. There we go. Here, look. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing something special today, aren't we? Yeah. Yes. Um, so this is Callie. She's a Maltese Terrier. She's two years old. And she's a very anxious little girl. So she's a little bit temperamental. Um, she has medication every day to help her because she really struggles with life. Um, but she, as you can see, she is a real sweetheart as well. So she's, yeah, usually through the day she's pretty good unless something has upset her or scared her. Um, but at night time, she's a bit grumpy. So we, we handle with care at night time, don't we? Yes. Are you tired? Are you tired? Yes. So this is the feature of our, she's the feature of our project today. So, um, yeah, but she's doing well. She's really well. She's really healthy. Um, and, um, yeah, she's doing well, aren't you? Yes. You're just sleepy. She's always sleepy. <laughs> All right. Do you want to go back to Amber now? Do you want to go see Amber? Where, oh, where's Amber? Where's Amber? She's also highly intelligent. Too clever, aren't you? Yes. Oh, there she is. There she is. Do you want to go? Okay, say bye, everyone. Bye. Off you go. Go to Amber. Amber might give you something special. Amber might give you something special. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I put you down. Now she's upset with me because I put her down. She wanted a cuddle. <laughs> oh, chicken. Go to Amber. Chicken is her very favorite treat. So that's her, that's her special high value treat. If ever we need to get her attention or, um, or give her her medication and things like that, chicken is, is the, uh, the choice, <laughs> the treat of choice. Now I've got dog fur stuck to my lipstick. <laughs> uh, um, 
So, uh, oh, Julie said, Julie said, hi, Callie. <laughs> so Callie is learning to meet new people. Um, she's only met a couple of my friends because she gets, because we got her during COVID, um, she, she missed those formative time, um, uh, what do you call them? Those formative, um, milestones like she didn't get properly socialized and things like that because we were in lockdowns and we kept on having lockdowns while we had her so we you know and we were so worried about COVID that we'd sort of come out of a lockdown but then we were still a bit anxious to have people come into the house and so all those you know those formative months of um all of that sort of thing she skipped all of that so she was already an anxious dog so now it's made her more anxious but she's getting better at meeting people. So she's met um, three of my friends now. And so she gets excited now when they come, um, which is really good. So we're gradually introducing her to new people because I would love to have people back in my home to have in-person classes rather than just having um, classes by mail. I'd like to have some in-person classes again as well because I miss all of my class ladies. So anyway, so that's a little bit about Callie. But one of her favorite things is playing with the hose outside. So we're going to be scrapbooking some photos of her doing that, um, which is always super fun. It is her most fun thing to do. Anyway, I'm going to tip the camera down. I just found another sequin. Um, I'm gonna tip the camera down onto the desktop and I will show you what we're going to be creating with today. So bear with me, I'll cover up the camera just so I don't make you all dizzy. And I'll just do a few little adjustments here. Here we go. Now, I'm not sure how close I'll need to have my camera today because we need to see a full 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. So I might need to adjust it again once I um, put the cardstock down. I mean, the, the designer series paper because we need to see a full, a full page today. Oh, we're cro crooked though. We want to be straight, especially today because otherwise that will be very annoying. Okay, so as I mentioned before, if you're looking for any of the products that I'm creating with today, you can go to my online store. Um, if you go to my blog, mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com, you'll find the button up the top for my online store. And hey, Dimity, how are you going? Um, and you'll also find lots of other creative inspiration there on my blog as well, as well as links to PDF um, versions of the catalogs, there's a subscription button there for my newsletter. If you're not subscribed to my newsletter and you'd like to be kept up to date with all the latest news, then um, feel free to subscribe to my newsletter and all sorts of things. So go to my blog and check it out. This is my March 2023 host code. So make sure you use that when you're shopping with me. Um, and all orders over $75, receive, uh, $75 receive a thank you gift. So again, here is the suite that we are focusing our project on today, which is the Rain or Shine suite. And the main focus of our project today is the beautiful designer series paper. We are going to use a few of the loose daisy embellishments as well, just a few. Um, but we're going to be using this here and we are going to be using um, the butterfly dies from the, the um, playing in the rain dies as well. Okay, so, um, and actually, no, this, the um, sentiment or the journaling I'm using is actually from a different stamp set. I'll show you when we get to that. So before we jump on in, um, if you are looking for, if you have a catalog and you're looking for the 12 by 12 card stocks, because um, although our designer series paper is, um, either 12 by 12 or 6 by 6. I'm using 12 by 12 today because I'm doing a full 12 by 12 scrapbooking layout. But if you are looking for 12 by 12 cardstock as your base, um, so I'm going to be using a white 12 by 12 piece today. On page 126, just move that up a little bit, page 126, um, you'll find here the that you can get 12 by 12 cardstock sheets in um, assortment packs. So they come in the color families. So there's a brights pack, a neutrals pack, regals and subtles. 
and um, you get two sheets of each of the 10 colors in those packs. So if you're looking for 12 by 12 cardstock, that's where you can find it. And then we've got the in colors as well. Okay, for the in colors, because there's um, only five colors in each of those in color families, you will get four sheets of each of the five colors. Okay, so that's a little bit, a little bit different. Um, then if you are looking for the, the white and the very vanilla, the basic white and the very vanilla, they are over on page 140 where you find some of the other 12 by 12 papers and the packaging. So you'll see them up here. I don't know why they're not with the other ones actually. I'm not quite sure of the reason. Would have made sense. It makes sense to me that it would have been with the others, but anyway. Um, so here you can get a 40 sheet, oh sorry, that's the A4, and then you've got the, um, the A4 thick, and then you've got the 12 by 12. So in the 12 by 12 packs, you get um, 12 sheets. So you got, can get a pack of basic white and a pack of very vanilla. We did have basic black as well that was available in the, I think it was in the July to December mini catalog, but it's now gone again. So we're hoping that they'll bring back black 12 by 12 as a staple item in, um, you know, a, a, preview, a future um, catalog. Um, there's also some other papers here as well um, that you might like to use in your projects. And the page before that, um, these are some of the ones that were included in my metallics and specialties paper samplers, which the, my order just rece was received today. Um, so I haven't opened the box yet, but in the next couple of days we'll be preparing those um, samplers. For, so for those of you who ordered my samplers, thank you so much. Um, they will be in the mail later this week. So there you go. So yeah, some of these beautiful papers would be beautiful for your um, layouts as well. And then of course we've got all of the designer series papers. Um, some are in 12 by 12s and some are in um, 6 by 6. So you've got all those beautiful patterned papers to choose from both here in the annual catalog and then you've got the mini catalog as well. Okay, now in terms of albums, at the moment Stampin' Up! are not stocking a 12 by 12 album. They only have the 6 by 8 album. So I'm making a 12 by 12 design, which means um, I actually have an old Stampin' Up! 12 by 12 album. Well, in fact, I've got a couple of them. Um, so I'll probably use one of those for Cali or I'll, I'll source another another new 12. I might actually get a separate 12 by 12 album. I might get, might get a new one to have just of photos of Cali because we've got so many photos of Cali um, and I might make an album just for her. Um, but yeah, but if you're looking for pocket style um, memory keeping, so you can do a similar type of thing to what I'm doing, but you can um, cut down your designer series paper or you can use the Memories and More cards, then if you go to page 136 or look under um, Memories and More in the online store, um, you'll find all of those. That's what I have been doing over the last few years is the, um, the pocket style memory keeping. So there you go. So that's just a little bit about memory keeping. So this is the beautiful paper that we're going to be using today. So this paper is gorgeous. Oh, I've got my cardstock under there. Actually, this is the cardstock. So that's the pack of the, the basic white 12 by 12 cardstock. So I had to wait for that to come before I could scrapbook with you because I like to have it as a, a nice solid base. And then these are the very cute papers. Now, you can see we've used a fair bit of this paper. And you've got all these fun designs. And these have got like a UV sort of coating, like some of these are shiny. I don't know if you can see that on camera. I'm not sure if that's coming up very well on camera. It's a bit hard to show it on camera. But yeah, again, the raindrops. Um, of course, these all come in 12 by 12 sheets, but um, we've been using this, so ours is all chopped up. <laughs> but just really beautiful and some fun designs with those raindrops and rain clouds. This one sort of looks cloudy, like a real... A, Looks really stormy that one these are really cute the dies that come in the bundle in the stamp set and dies they actually um, do cut out these images as well which is really fun 
and then we've got these ones as well and these have got shiny bits on them too which again you probably can't see on camera but um yeah they're really cute but the one that we are using today is this one here this gorgeous one here so this is going to be the basis of our layout today now of course when you're you're creating a scrapbooking page you can cut up the papers and you can um, you know do lots of layers and borders and all different sorts of things but because this one is a beautiful scene I'm actually keeping this as a full piece okay and we're going to add to it so I'm, I'm going to show you um, what I have designed with this one um, Julie said um, she wishes that they did 12 I wish they I wish they had 12 by 12 oh in the albums I had to source one from elsewhere because I'm making a Toy Story themed scrapbook oh wow that sounds amazing to be gifted to a friend's little boy who is turning to oh that sounds amazing Julie oh you'll have to show me before you send it off take some photos that'll be awesome yes it is a shame that they don't have the um the 12 by 12 albums anymore um and it is a shame that we have to source them from elsewhere the black ones that they used to have were fantastic i still have my uh, i've got a couple of them and i think um i wonder if brooke took hers with her i think she might have taken hers with her she was doing um she was doing some scrapbooking as well of some of her overseas trips but anyway so this is the one we are doing today got my cardstock ready now I always like to have because this is paper and of course it's not as strong as um, your cardstock now it does depend on your album some of the albums will actually come with the pockets with cardstock already in them in which case you could make your layout and just slip it straight in but um, if not so what i used to do depending on the type of album i was using i would actually attach my designer series paper to my cardstock with double-sided tape now i decided that i won't actually do that today i'm just going to sit it on there just for a bit of stability but i'm not going to actually attach it to it at the moment because i'm not sure i don't have an album yet for this particular layout or or an album for cali because this is the first time that i'm creating traditional scrapbooking as I said in 15 years so I'm just going to sit it under there for the moment um, just for a bit of stability while we're creating but I will if I need to attach it depending on the type of album I'll get I'll um, attach it later once I work out what album I'm going to use <laughs> which I'll have to I'll have to probably go shopping and have a look and see what's out there nowadays all right so let me share with you now we the layout as I said I've already designed it um, I've got everything here for the layout. However, I had an issue with the photos. I have the photos, so we're going to create with the photos that I have, but these are not going to be the, the actual photos. Well, they're, they're the photos that I'm going to use, but I'm not using these particular ones because I had some issues printing these. Um, and... I don't know if it's my printer or if it's the printer paper that I'm using, but the ink is actually coming off these photos. So last night I ended up with very black fingers and I thought, where is this coming from? What is going on? And then I realized that the ink is actually coming off the photos. So this is a different, I've tried two different brands of paper, but they're not the same brand as the printer. And I know when we've had previous printers, we had to use the same brand paper with the printer because it's like calibrated specially or something to the particular printer I don't know if that's the problem or this isn't just a great this just isn't a great printer for photos but anyway these are the photos that we are using so Callie's favorite thing as I mentioned before is playing in the hose she absolutely loves playing with the hose so normally you would say playing under the hose it's just an added sim an ad added syllables and we've always said to her playing in the hose which isn't grammatically correct but it's, it's how we we um, talk about it to her and she absolutely loves it so you can see here she's so excited she's jumping up to the hose waiting for us to squirt the water and then she loves to chase the water so this um this was a six by four photo and i just cropped it down it printed a little bit bigger than 10 by 15 centimeters so i just cropped it down to 10 by 15 centimeters 
And then these ones, I printed these ones. <laughs> Look at her. This, this is a really cute action shot of her um, jumping up to try and catch the water. Um, these ones I printed as index cards on my brother printer. And then I've just cut them down to, what did I cut them down to? Let me see. Um, 7.5 by 10 centimetres. So they're 7.5 that way by 10. And I had already cropped the photo in a little bit too on my computer before I printed them. I'm going to handle these really carefully, but I also have my baby wipes nearby in case I get any of that ink on me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the layout. Um, I'm going to place the photos in place, but I'm not actually going to adhere the photos today to the, the layout because I'll have to go and get proper ones printed. Um, so that's um, the second one. And then here she is trying to catch the water. You can see the water spraying out there of the, the hose. So she's got her mouth open, ready to try and catch the water. <laughs> see how she's running towards it? She absolutely loves it. It's her, her most favourite game, apart from her chicken run game. She loves playing hunt for the chicken, of course. And there she is trying to catch the water. So <laughs> she, she just absolutely loves it. And she runs. Oh, my goodness, she runs so fast. So I've got a couple of other ones. They're the ones that I chose to use, and that's all that I could basically fit nicely on the layout and have it still, you know, look nice and not too cluttered. And then I've got these other couple of photos that were really cute that I wanted to use as well, but I just couldn't fit them on. So I might do a second layout. Um, I might do like a an opposite page layout and add these ones to that. So I've got this one, which is really cute with her, just a little bit wet. Not too wet at that stage, but that's a really, really cute photo of her. But then the next photo is, and see when I printed it too, I started getting all these streaks and stripes through the photos, which was so disappointing because it's such a cute photo of her. And then I got this big, ugly streak. But as it turns out, all the ink rubs off anyway. But this is what she looks like after playing in the hose. So, <laughs> so yes, she gets very, very wet. Um, Amber said, luckily, she's currently asleep and not listening to you say it. Oh, yes, because it's a trigger word too. She would be bugging me to go outside to play. Yes. So if she if she hears us use the word H-O-S-E, she is at us, at us. Okay, let's go outside. Let's go outside. Time to play. Time to play. <laughs> and she bugs us until we take, take her outside. But of course, we only let her do that, you know, when it's warm enough and not not when it's too hot. We usually wait until the afternoon. Because she's a white dog too, we don't want her out in the sun, getting sunburnt and things like that. So, all right. So let's start. Oh, wait, let me show you some of the other products that we're going to be using. I've got quite a few here, actually. We're going to be using the Alphabet a la mode dies. And this is the first time I'm using these. So I'm super excited. There's two sheets of dies in there. You'll see when I go to use these. So we're using these for the title. For the title, we are also using the Alpha Best stamp set with the coordinating Best Labels uh, punch. Now, these can be purchased together as a bundle, um, or you can purchase them individually if you didn't want the punch, but we're going to be using those as well for part of the title. Um, we're also going to be using the Days to Remember stamp set for the date. Um, so I'm just putting the month and the year and I'm going to show you um, a little bit of a trick to do that because I just wanted 23, not 2023. So I'll show you how I, I did that because this is one long, this is one big stamp. So I'll show you how I did that. Um, then for the journaling, I'm not actually doing any handwritten journaling on this one. Like when, when I used to scrapbook before, we used to handwrite journal on everything. We even hand did some of our titles and things. Um, hey, Laurie, how are you going? I'm well, thank you. I hope you are too. Um, but I am. I wanted to put on the page something about this being her, her happiest thing or her most fun thing or her favourite thing. So I'm actually going to use this sentiment here from this stamp set, I couldn't be happier. And I'm doing a bit of masking with this stamp set. So I'll show you some masking techniques. And then we're going to add some butterflies because... We get lots of little white butterflies in our in our yard and butterflies were very special to my mum. So whenever we see butterflies, it always reminds me of my mum. 
um, and we get lots of white butterflies and that we started to notice white butterflies after Molly died which was really interesting so Molly was a, um, a Shih Tzu and she was also white but she had brown markings on her whereas Callie is pure white and ever since Molly died um, we see lots of white butterflies now they were probably already there you know beforehand but we hadn't really noticed them but we notice them a lot now and often when we've got the hose out the white butterflies come so the butterflies are going to feature on our layout as well so we're using the um, playing in the rain dies which come from this suite and I'm not using any other thing on the dies apart from the butterflies today. I've used these dies on other projects and Amber has too. Um, but today we're just using the beautiful little butterflies. So um, I'm also going to be using the best, the very best trio punch for my little um, journaling tags. So we're using that one. We've got some ribbon, we've got some trim. We're gonna be using some foam adhesive sheets as well for our title because I, when I was designing it, I did them flat. And on reflection, I thought, no, they need to be raised. And having them on foam adhesive means that um, they will, um, they'll be, you know, they'll have a bit of give to them. So they're not going to damage any other layout that'll be opposite them or on the other side of them and that sort of thing because that's one thing you've got to be really careful about when you are designing um i used to teach scrapbooking so um many years many moons ago <laughs> in a former life i used to teach scrapbooking so um i used to teach all of the the um what's the word all of the not the rules but all of the um tips and tricks and things you need to watch out for and be careful of and um, you know using what types of products to use and all that sort of thing I used to teach all of that but I won't go into too much of that today because a lot of you I know are already scrapbookers and if you would like to know more please let me know and I would happy to give you lots more tips and tricks all right another thing we're going to be using today is lots of white scraps because we're using lots of small pieces so I pulled out all of my white scraps this is my little tub that sits on my um, trolley which you've probably seen in the the background and also too I've got my little packet of white scraps that sits on my shelf so we're only using two colors of um, cardstock today we're using white and we are using mango melody so this is going to be the um, the mounts for our or the mat layers for our photos so um, oh you're well that's great good to hear that Laurie Hi Martha, how are you going? Great to have you here. All right, so the first thing we want to do is to um, map our photos. So of course, whenever you're creating any layout, the first thing you're going to do is choose your photos and then choose what's going to go with your photos. So I thought this little garden scene was perfect for Callie's photos. Even though we don't have flowers in the photos, you know, we've got all the grass, we've got the clouds. Um, we do have a veggie garden in the background. But <laughs> um, yeah, so then you want to work out, obviously, how you're going to lay your, or how you're going to display your photos on your layout. Um, and so I decided that I was going to map them with the Mango Melody, which matches with the beautiful little daffodils in the, um, or is that what they are? Daffodils, little flowers anyway, in the garden. All right, so to do that, um, because this card is, oh, sorry, this card, here we go. <laughs> See, I'm so much in the card making mindset that, um, I'm probably going to keep saying card. It's a, it's a scrapbooking layout. Um, this one was, uh, printed and the dimensions of this photo, not card, photo is 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters. So I created, I cut a piece of um, cardstock from the Mango Melody, which I've already done ahead of time. And I cut a matte layer of, um, oh, I've got ink on that side. I'll have to use that side. No, I can't use that side. Oh no, that's right. That'll be covered up. Um, so I added half a centimetre. So this matte layer measures 10.5 by 15.5 centimetres. Okay. So that's the one for that. And then I wanted to create a strip for those. So this is a full sheet, but we won't cut that one today because I've already done it ahead of time. So then 
I cut this piece which is 23 centimeter, uh, sorry, 10.5 centimeters by 23.5 centimeters so that I could lay these photos on one strip and sort of have them in like a sequence like that and still have a 2.5 centimeter border the same as for the larger one, the larger um, image. Okay, so I will attach those. I've got to watch my hands. I'm just going to get a baby wipe out because, as I said, the um, these aren't the final photos that I'm going to use. I'm going to go and get these ones reprinted professionally because, for some reason, my printer, um, I don't know if it's the paper or if it's the printer, but the ink is actually lifting off these photos. So um, that's really annoying. <laughs> it's very, very annoying. I was so disappointed because I, and I tried again this morning too with um, a different setting on my printer because I thought, oh, maybe it's just the setting. So I tried a different setting but still had the same issue. So yeah, anyway. Um, but I will show you how to mount these. Um, I just won't attach them to the actual final layout because um, I'll wait until I get the proper photos printed and then I'll add them. So I've got my baby wipe nearby ready to wipe my fingers if I get that that ink on them um, and I'll just move this to the side so that I don't get ink on that layout and I'm going to bring in a scrap piece of paper all right so let's do our, our large one first as I said I've got a um, I just added five uh, sorry half a centimeter um, to the cardstock so that I've got, um, it'll end up being a 2.5 millimeter border on each side. So I like to use, when I'm scrapbooking, I like to use double-sided tape. Um, so this is the Stampin' Up! double-sided tape. It's called um, Terran, Terran Tape. Oh my goodness, I went blank then for a moment. Terran Tape. It's a very, very strong um, adhesive and it is acid-free. So anytime you are using... Uh, sorry, anytime you are creating a um, memory album, a scrapbooking album, memory keeping of any type, make sure that you are using acid-free products because if they're not acid-free, they will um, affect your photos over time and they will start to break them down and cause all sorts of ugly marks on them and all sorts of things. So make sure you are using acid-free um, products when you're scrapbooking. So this is how I like to um, do mine. So I just add the tape to all four sides and I do add the adhesive all the way around because I wanna make sure that this photo is gonna be nice and secure. I mean, these are memory albums. We are, um, you know, these are for long-term, you know, memory keeping. So we wanna make sure that they're going to last the distance all right so then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to line this up on my mat and you notice that i only removed the adhesive from that top from the top of that photo first until i get this lined up and now i'm going to put that over the top to press that on so i don't get that ink on my fingers okay and then once I know that I've got that nicely lined up then I start to remove the rest of the tape so I always do my right side first and then I do the other two sides so I've got those two taped and it's kind of when I'm using double-sided tape on my card making I do it um, in a similar fashion as well although I tend to use a lot more glue nowadays on my cards There we go. Sorry, I'm handling this very, very carefully because I just don't want to get that ink everywhere. There we go. All right, so that's the first one mounted up. So now I can handle that much more easily without worrying about getting the ink all over because I can just hold it by the cardstock. One thing to note with your coloured cardstock is when you are storing it, try and store it away from the light. I noticed with some of my colours, and this was one of them in particular, it's not a colour I use a lot, the Mango Melody. So it sits on my shelf and it sits there for a long time. Now I have got my um, paper stackers that are behind me, which you probably see in my videos. 
um, but the edges of them are sticking out from the shelf. So I noticed that the edge of the top layer or the top piece had actually um, discolored a little bit with the light. So the light will affect them if they're, if they're getting a lot of bright light. So try and keep them in a dark place or, or in a, um, on a shelf where they're going to be protected from the sunlight and things like that. So just be aware of that with the, um, it's to do with the pigmentation in the cardstock. Oh, you might notice on the back here, see how it's just discolored a little bit? That was the edge piece that was just sticking out of the shelf. So, but it's on the back, so nobody knows. Except you, because I just told you. <laughs> so it's just some of the colours I've just noticed that on, not on all of them. And usually the ones that I've had sitting there for a really long time that I haven't been using. So, yeah. Oh, you've noticed the same with the Calypso Coral? Yeah, probably because we haven't been using it, Amber. So, yeah. All right. So now with this one, um, we're going to line these ones up. And I'm going to start with the top photo. And we'll do the same thing. So who else is a scrapbooker? Let me know in the comments if you are a scrapbooker. I know that Julie is. Um, Julie makes beautiful albums and she just mentioned a moment ago that she's creating a Toy Story album at the moment, which is very exciting. I can't wait to see that. All right. Um, I used to do a lot. Well, it's funny, you know, because I actually started as a card maker about 20, what do we work it out to be? How old's Jake? He's 26. 23 years ago, I started card making or thereabouts. And then I might um, put the might put the tape on all of these at one time. Um, then I was going to a card making group at a lady's house um, in Penrith, and she had a little um, a little storefront as well this is before i was a stampin up demonstrator i think that was that was even before stampin up was in australia when i first started um we had a couple of other australian companies that are no longer in existence um back then and um yeah so anyway so through these ladies i actually discovered scrapbooking well then, as they said back then, I crossed over to the other side for a very long time. I moved to scrapbooking predominantly and I wasn't doing any card making for a really long time. I actually went back to, dare I say it, purchasing my cards. Oh, how terrible. I can't believe I actually did that. Um, because I was spending all my time scrapbooking and I was teaching scrapbooking and, and, um, yeah, and I really, really loved it, really, really got into it, but I became so passionate about it that my poor card making got um, set aside. Then I started, then I went back to work after raising our children, being a full-time mum for um, 15 years. Um, they were getting a little bit older and we wanted to, we needed a bigger house and so I had to go back to work. And um, so when I went back to work, all of my craft got left aside because I just did not have any spare time um, to do any craft at all. So for a long time, I didn't do anything. No card making, no scrapbooking, nothing. Oh, you haven't done scrapbooking for a few years, Dimity? Ah, maybe I might give you some, some inspiration today. So anyway, so yeah, so I didn't do any craft for quite a few years. And then I got back into um, a little bit of card making. I was dabbling a little bit in card making and going to a few workshops of friends and things like that. And then um, I discovered the pocket style scrapbooking or memory keeping. And so then I picked that back up as well. But up until this point, I had not yet picked up traditional scrapbooking until today. Well, until yeah, early hours of this morning. So now, um, yes, I just have to make sure now that I'm, I'm getting back into it that I continue with my card making. <laughs> and I don't just become, you know, fixated on scrapbooking and not do my card making anymore. So I have, you know, to be honest, this has been on my to-do list for a little while, quite a while actually. And I've got customers who are scrapbookers. Now, I'm just going to do the top and the bottom one. For, I just want to make sure I've got that lined up. I've got a lot of customers that are scrapbookers. 
and they have been asking me for a long time um, are you going to start up scrapbooking classes and I had said a really long time ago that it's something that I would like to do I just couldn't see where I could fit it in and to be honest I was a little bit um, hesitant I was procrastinating a lot about it because I was so no nervous to get back into it so today when I went to start filming today I felt really nervous I don't feel nervous now I'm settling into it which is great um, but yeah I felt really nervous because I've been away from it for so long and trends have changed and lots of different things have changed and but I have been um, doing lots of research into what's current and you know what the current trends are what people are doing now and it's not so different to our card making so I thought you know what I'm gonna do it so here I am doing it today so thank you so much for everyone who is with me today live and here to support me <laughs> because it's a little bit daunting when you haven't done something for a really long time so there we go so I'm just doing I'm just taking my time to do this because I'm trying to handle these photos so carefully because of that ink coming off them and I will wipe my hands after I've done this so that I don't get ink on the rest of our project and then once these are mounted up I'll be able to move them around quite a bit easier use that piece of paper again to give that a rubby rub rub I can already see where I turned that those photos upside down on this white piece of paper it's picked up some of that ink I really don't know why the ink was not setting on that photo paper it must be the wrong type of photo paper for that particular printer but I think I'll just go and, I'll just go and get them done professionally I'll go to office works or big W or somewhere and just get them printed properly and be done with it might get some other ones done while I'm there ready for my next layout there we go ah no I slipped ah uh oh oh no and I've used the strong tape oh I lift that up very carefully if it hasn't stuck for too long if it's just adhered usually you can get it up okay like I just did then I just was able to remove it okay but if you've pressed it down really tightly and it's stuck 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 or you know what you do then is you get out you take your pick tool and you use your spatula and you get that underneath in between the adhesive and the cardstock give it a jiggle and just work it really gently though really gently really slowly because if not I've actually broken one of these being too rough I was in a hurry I was getting impatient <laughs> I was like oh just get unstuck you silly thing and uh, yeah broke my take a pick tool so don't do that don't do what I do <laughs> Just take it easy, be careful, take it gently. There we go. All right, and let's adhere that one down. There we go. Okie dokie, so we might not need that piece of paper now. I'll pop that over there. There we go, so now we've got our photos all mounted up. Now I'm just doing single mount on this because the paper has got a lot going on and the scene that I'm creating, um, or the layout that I'm creating has got a lot going on in it. So I'm just doing a single mount with um, photos. You know, when I used to do my albums before, sometimes I'd do double mount or triple mount or, you know, add lots of layers, but I'm just doing single mount for this, for this layout. All right, just check. I didn't do too badly with getting the ink on me. So that's, that's pretty good. All right. All right, dry my hands. I just rub them on my skirt. <laughs> don't want to get ink don't want to get um, wet fingers now on my cardstock all right so there's our two layouts so what we're going to do I'm going to line these up to where I'm going to have them so I can show you where they are going to sit on here and then we will create the rest of our layout so I'm going to have this one over here about there now I did take a photo of what I created last night or early hours of this morning I should say so I know where I'm putting everything okay so don't be worried you're not going to be here all night <laughs> because I do know what I'm doing today all right so that's going to go there that's going to go there I'm looking at my picture that I printed out of my photo I took so that I've got everything lined up exactly where I need it all right so um, I'm not adhering those as I said at this stage we're going to create a couple of little um, journaling tags to go along with those sorry let me move that up I'm not used to working on such a large area 
so trying to keep it in camera is a little bit of a challenge for me today <laughs> um yes so we're going to do some journaling tags i'll show you those a little bit later but first of all i want to create the i want to show you how i created the um title that's the word the title <laughs> all right so here's where all your scraps are going to come into play now i pulled out a whole heap already that i thought would be a great size um all of these little strips, these little off-cut strips, we're going to use some of those for today, and I've already gone through them and pulled out the, the relevant size ones that I needed. Um, we are using two different colour inks today, so I am doing some stamping, so I am incorporating my stamping into my layout. I'm using some So Saffron, which I'm just using for colouring the butterflies, um, and I'm going to be doing some stamping and daubering with the Balmy Blue. So I've got daubers for both of these. Um, I do have a Tahitian Tide Stamp and Write marker because I don't have a Balmy Blue one. My Balmy Blue one um, dried out, and because we can't order them singly, they only come in the um, the colour family pack. Um, I haven't ordered the whole pack until I um, need some other colours. So, so I'm using a little bit of Tahitian Tide, but. In a very, very small way. You'll see. You'll see when I use it. <laughs> I've got some embellishing, um, all different sorts of things. But let's work on the title first. So last night I did create the title and I die cut it out of the Mango Melody. Um, and the title is Playing in the Hose. Now, the hose is just in... Um, this font using these dies. What I did last night is I first of all added some um, adhesive sheets to the back of some cardstock. Look, I can't even spell when I'm trying to talk. Um, I did add some adhesive sheets to the back of these so that these would then become stickers and I could easily stick them on my layout. When I had them on my layout with everything else, I did decide that they needed a bit more height. So you could either cut a couple and then stick them together, maybe two or three, to make them a little bit higher. But I'm actually going to use some foam adhesive sheets and mount them up. Now, as I said, the foam adhesive sheets, because you've got that bit of give in them and they're soft and they're foamy, they're not going to damage your other layouts. Okay. Um, so yeah, so you can you can use those. So I've got some already. I've got some that's already cut, but we'll um, use a fresh sheet as well. So we'll pull out the, the letters that we're going to use and the card stock, which I've got hiding under here. Now I had a sheet that, I had some off cuts as well of this. So I thought, oh, well, I'll probably fit all of the letters, well, most of them on here. So what we're going to do first is, actually, let me, let me just check the letters first to make sure I am going to fit them all. Okay, we've got our H, we've uh, our E, our H. Uh, we need two E's, and we've got two E's, so that's good. We can cut them both at once. Uh, we're going to need two H's, but we've only got one, so we'll have to do a double cut on that one. We've got an O. Now, interestingly, the O and the zero, here's the other sheet of them, the O and the zero are exactly the same, because last night I accidentally cut out the zero, and I thought, oh, no, I'm going to have to go and cut another one. And then I lined them up and thought, oh, that's okay. They're exactly the same. So, yeah, so that's really easy. So you've actually got two O's or two zeros. H-O-S, we need an S, there's an S. There's two S's, there's one on one page, one on the other. I am going to put these onto magnetic sheets. It was just so late last night when I was using them, um, and we need the T, um, that I thought, oh, I don't have time to do that tonight. It'll take too long because there's so many dies but I will put these ones onto um, magnetic sheets, make it much easier to get them on and off. All right, so let's see. We've got our T-H, T-H-E, and then we've got the H there, and then our O-S-E. So we're going to need... Um, to cut an extra one, but I'm just gonna I just want to see if they're all gonna fit. Oh, yeah I'll be able to do it on this one piece. Okay, great So what I'll do I'll just put my dies aside and take my foam adhesive sheet Sorry, that's a bit noisy. Let me 
open that packet off camera. It's a brand new packet. So with these foam adhesive sheets, they're like our Stampin' Dimensionals, but rather than them being um, cut into the hexagon shapes already for us, like in our, our large size and our mini size, it's just a full sheet of the adhesive foam. So if you need a full sheet of adhesive foam or you need you know, a larger piece or you need an unusual size piece, then you can use um, these ones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut a piece that um, is the same size as my cardstock. I'm just gonna do that with my snips. Well, these aren't my snips. These are actually a pair of my um, tape scissors because these are the ones that get sticky. I don't use my good um, paper snips for these, for adhesive. I only use old scissors for adhesive. All right, save that strip because that'll come in handy for other projects. All right, now what we're gonna do is we are going to remove one side of the protective paper. And now this is all sticky. And we're going to adhere that to our cardstock and it doesn't matter which size, which side. Okay, so we're going to attach that to our cardstock. Make sure we've got that lined up. Okay, and now once we remove that other backing, once we've die cut, that then becomes a mounted sticky piece that we can adhere. So I'm going to pop my dies on here. The oh, that's the that's the other H O. I need to leave a little bit of a gap so the die machine can, the die cutting machine can um, cut them. Because if we do them too close, the die cutting machine might have a bit of a hard time. So I'll just give them a little bit of space between them. There we go. And I'll put my S down here. And then when I do the other H, I can use that part there. So to keep them all in place, I am actually going to washi tape them down. That'll be about right. I'm just going to dab this washi tape onto my skirt first so that I can pick up a little bit of lint so it's not too, too sticky. I want to be able to remove it again. Okay, just to hold them in place so that they don't jiggle around while we are trying to position them in the machine. There we go. All right. So I'm going to use my mini machine. Now, last night I was using my big machine. So I'll just put these ones to the side. These letters, I'll still keep these because they've got the adhesive on the back of them. I might be able to use them for something else. Another project. So I'll hang on to them. I'll keep them with my dies. Where's my plates? Okay, so we've got our mini machine, our little mighty mini. And I've got my... Um, base plate number one, my cutting plate number two, and then I've got another number two plate for on the top. So these fit beautifully. Look at that. That piece of cardstock was just the perfect size. Now, this is thick mounting foam. Okay, so you might need to just crank your machine through a little bit more gently. Just take your time because it is it will cut through it but it is going to compress it too and I'm going to go back the other way just to be sure there we go okay now before I remove the dies I just want to make sure that it cut all the way through all of them look okay, except for this first E. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, that has cut through. So you can, this is this is a good way to do it, is keep them on your plate, keep all the dies in place, and just check. And if anything's not, if you're not sure if one of them has cut all the way through, just push on the back there and see if that has actually cut through. And I can see that that has cut through. So they're ready to remove. move my machine for a moment I'll just oh I've got nowhere to move it to hang on I'll move it over there there we go okay so we'll take all of these out
another good reason for um that one came out with the with the whole letter another good reason to washi tape your letters is so you don't lose them too <laughs> so if you drop these on the floor they might be a bit hard to find so very fine oh this one the washi tapes pushed down so hard on there it's hard to get it up there we go got it okay so now we'll pop out I'll pop out all of those letters first before I run it through again with that extra letter. In fact, that's marked a little bit from the from the plates, but I think that should be okay. All right, so now I'll just push these out gently and I'm pulling them from the back so that that adhesive foam is intact. And see how they've now got that nice depth, which is a big difference from just the flat letter. See the difference so now they'll they'll sit up nicely on the project and give really make the um the title pop i keep on going to call it a sentiment i'm so used to saying the word sentiment with my card making so i'm just trying to release this gently to keep the um backing paper intact so I want that to stay on the leather until I'm ready to stick it. There we go, make sure that's still there. T-H-E. This is probably the most fiddly part of the whole process, I think. There we go. Oh, they look really good. I'm happy with those. Oops, that one, the backing paper's coming off. Let's just reposition that. Does, has anybody else used the, um, oh, no worries, Julie, you're going to catch the replay? All good, all good. Has anybody else, um, has anybody else used the, the foam sheets in this way to use for titles? Let me know if you have. Or maybe you've used it for lettering on your um, cards. I'm going to pop that, pop that back the other way through the back. Oh, that way. There we go. Okay. And, oh, make sure your S is up the right way. It's got a larger loop at the bottom and a smaller loop at the top. So you should be able to tell which way up that goes. And our O came out with the die so there we go that popped out okay and just ease that centerpiece out now that centerpiece of the o is a big oval so it's worth keeping that because you might be able to use that on another project for something or even even a little label with a little tiny stamped word that would be cute so i'm going to keep that all right, and now we need an H. We need another H. So let's grab our H from our dies here. I'll put that one back on there and we'll run that back through again. There we go. Okay, so all my letters here. I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, uh, so we've got two. Yeah, that's right. Just double checking I had all the right letters. I might pop these straight back into my packet. I'll put them back onto the sheet later because as I said, I'm going to put them on magnetic sheets anyway. So I'll just tip them into the packet so I don't lose them. <clears throat> Move that over and we'll just do the same thing again with our H. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? To make it easier for my machine, I'm going to cut away some of this other mounting foam just so my machine isn't having to feed through all of that. Let's just do the one letter and that'll make it much easier. There we go. Now remember any die that has a straight edge, put it through at an angle. Makes it so much easier for your machine to, um, to catch that with the rollers rather than getting that big speed bump. There we go. Oh, it's much easier just with one. <laughs> we'll go back again. 
flip it over and oh it came off anyway oh yeah that cut all the way through so that's all good okay so we'll pop that that out actually we've got to take the die off first don't we take the die off first washi tape when the washi tape goes through with the foam tape because the foam tape has got a lot of height to it um, it compresses the washi tape even tighter onto your piece that you're holding down. So it does make it a bit harder to get that washi tape off. Oops, got my the bottom of my H stuck there. There we go. So just very gently getting those out because they are very delicate because they're very thin lettering. And oops here we go oh the paper backing's coming off that one so we'll just reattach that here we go we're not ready to stick you yet little h there we go beautiful okay so now um i don't know of any other use for this unless you were doing a full word and you had like the full out cut uh the full cut out um you could use sort of like the negative on a project that would be really awesome but i kind of haven't positioned my letters in order to be able to do that but that is an idea for you all right so that is all for our die cutting oh no we've got our butterflies to do well in fact you know what i've done i have gone ahead and die cut my butterflies so i won't die cut them again but i will show you the die just to save on time because that lettering did take a little bit of time so this is the um, this is the plain in the rain dies, okay? That coordinates with the rain and shine suite, and I used these two little butterflies here, okay? I just used some scrap cardstock. I ran that through and I die cut out um, six of those, five of which I'm using. I've got a spare one in here in my I kept just no in that packet no my other packet. I have another one, another packet somewhere. Oh, yeah, no, it is in here. It is in here. Um, so I'll show you what I did with those butterflies, but I've already done quite a few of them ahead of time just to save a little bit of time today so you didn't have to sit there and watch me die cut all of those because I would have to run that through three times and, you know, that all takes time. Most of you already know how to die cut, but if you don't, then it's basically the same way as I just die cut those letters except I wouldn't be putting the mounting foam on the back first. I'd just be die cutting just the cardstock on its own. Okay, so we'll pop that over there, put our plates over there out of the way. Um, I'll just put my mounting foam away as well. There we go. Oh, there's an extra piece. We'll hang on to that. Okay, oh, and my H. That needs to go back in the packet. I don't want to lose that. There we go. So all the letters are back in the packet. All right, fantastic. So I've got the hose. Now I need to create my playing in the. No, I've got my the. I just need to create my playing, playing in. That's what I need to create. All right, so there's those lettering. So let's pop them to the side. And we're going to create the playing in part of our title. So to do that, hang on, I'm just getting washi, washi tape off my fingers. One minute I've got ink on my fingers, the next minute I've got washi tape everywhere. Um, I'm going to use this stamp set, the Alpha Best stamp set, and I am going to show you how I created this, even though I've already done it. Um, I am going to show you how I did it. So we need these and we need our balmy blue ink. We need some strips. Now, interestingly, when I was doing this last night, I didn't realize which way the um, stamp set stamped on, sorry, which way the punch punched the cardstock. So I did a little test afterwards because I had to um, do them individually, then trim the paper and then do them individually. But I do already have the stamps ready on my block and the way that I've got my stamps is actually the way that I had them last night so i had the um the play on one block and the ing on another block to have them spaced out so that i could punch them but then i realized that actually in actual fact they're going to punch out 
this way. So I need to turn them all around and stamp them this way. And hopefully I've got enough. Actually, I might put, oh no, that'll work. That should work okay, I think. Hopefully I've got enough space between each of the letters doing it this way to um, punch around them. Let's make a little bit. So I've left a gap. I've left a good gap so that when I go to punch my letters, there'll be space around them to punch them out. Okay. So I'll do it the same with these ones and turn these ones around. And this block has only got three letters, so I can space them out even a bit more. Just lining them up underneath each other so I can use some of these um, scrap pieces of cardstock that I had. So I've got this one here, and I'll grab another one as well. It's a great way of using some of your strips. All right, so you've, using the Alphabest stamp set, pop that over there. We'll use the punch in a moment. And we are just simply going to ink up our letters. So make sure you get good ink coverage on those. We're going to stamp them on our cardstock. I'll just turn it sideways to make it easier. There we go. So there's our play. Now it doesn't matter that they're not straight because we are going to punch them out with the punch. And then we'll do our ing. Oh, I've just realized I've got my N upside down, but that doesn't matter because we're punching it out. Oh, my G didn't stamp very well, did it? That's okay. Let's get another um, scrap strip. There's another scrappy strip, as Bruno Batucci would say. <laughs> and we'll just stamp them again. Now, I haven't used my foam mat underneath usually when i'm using photopolymer stamps especially if i'm doing lettering i will use my um stamp and pierce mat which is a foam mat underneath my stamps just gives a bit of a better um, finish but i didn't do that on these ones because we are going to be doing a bit of um inking and things anyway so let's keep these are clean so this is a great way of incorporating some of your stamps into um, your scrapbooking layouts. So we don't have to just use our stamps just for stamping or for card making. You can use them for all different types of projects. All right, so I'm just going to line this up in my punch. Hopefully get that straight and punch. And there we go. We've got our little labels now. So our, our words play and in are going to be using these little labels. So we are using a couple of different fonts in our layout, which is always fun to mix and mix it up a little bit. There we go. So we've got our play and we need our ing. Actually, we need um, Yes, we need two ings because we need two I's and two N's. Oop. And our N is upside down, but that's okay because we're going to flip that around. And our G. Um, Brenton says he's used lettering with the adhesive foam. Oh, great. It's awesome, isn't it? It's really... Um, really fun to do in fact i'm going to just do another i and another n because we need our word in as well there we go so we've got playing in and we don't need the extra g okay so these are really cute this is a really lovely um alphabet stamp set and you've also got these little um decorative pieces down here which stamp out the same shape as the punch and then you can do your lettering on them or you can use them as um, embellishing you can also use this punch with your designer series paper um, so yeah so many different options and then you've got a couple of little extra um, embellishments here too these cute little flowers and the stars and you've got your symbols as well um, also other um, other language um, we've got the the German and the French 
and I'm not sure what this one is with the is that Dutch I'm not sure so yeah it's a really great stamp set all right so we've got those all punched out ready now what we're going to do is bring back in our balmy blue ink and our sponge dauber of course we're doing some mandy daubering we're going to dauber around each one of these little labels okay and i'll show you the difference of how it looks just plain white and with the daubering now originally when i first did this i just had them plain white on the layout and i thought oh they need something else they just looked too bland but see the difference now with the inked edge it makes such a difference on the layout now i've already done all of the other letterings so i won't go ahead and do the rest because i've actually already got them prepared earlier in my little packet there but I just wanted to show you how I created those. Okay, so that's our playing. We've got the playing in the, and we've got our hose. That one can go in the bin. All right, now we can add that to our layout, and then we can start adding all of our other pieces as well. All right, so I'll get out the ones that I prepared earlier. Now, before sticking those photos down too, when I, when I get the originals, I am adding a little bit of something just under the edge of those photos. So I'm gonna show you that too. And I've got those little butterflies as well. So what I did with my butterflies, got all my little pieces here. I'll just put these ones up there so I don't get them mixed up. What I did with my little butterflies is I did that same daubering technique, but using, um, so saffron ink with a dauber with so saffron uh, sorry yeah with so saffron on it um to just dauber around the edges of the little butterflies as well okay just to give them a little bit of yellow the little white butterflies that we do get in our garden they do sort of have a little tinge of yellow on them um and so that's kind of representative of the little butterflies that we get in our garden all right so here are the letterings that i've already done and now i'll have to get them in the right order here we go oh that's okay rose no worry oh you're going to watch the re the replay on youtube for the finished project fantastic have a beautiful dinner out tonight i hope you have a really great evening thank you so much for being here all right so we've got our playing in and i'll show you the difference between the letters that were um inked and the uninked ones i'll do a, a plain l and you'll see oh that's an i that's not even an l that's an i <laughs> so that's the that's the inked l and that's the uninked l so it just when I had when I had the whole sent uh, the whole title there just uninked it just looked so unfinished and I thought oh I don't like that so there we go now what we're going to do is um, we're going to add a stamp and dimensional can you see the difference there you probably can't see the difference that much on camera when it's down there but maybe if I hold it up here you'll see you see the difference between the inked and the uninked one anyway believe me it's subtle but believe me it did look a lot better all right so we're going to have playing in so move that over a little bit playing in and I don't have that quite lined up exactly where I want it but that's okay because I'm going to lift it back up in a minute we're going to add some stampin dimensionals behind these letters and then I'll be able to position them right where I want them. And then we're going to have the hose. Hopefully she's still asleep and she can't hear me say that. <laughs> Otherwise she'll be annoying Amber. The. The hose. 
She's so funny. Even when we just say, even when we just say the hose or dad mentions, daddy mentions something about the hose. She's like, hose, hose, where's the hose? Can we go under the hose? <laughs> she's, she's obsessed with the hose. Okay, so that's kind of what our sentiment is going to look like, but of course, lined up and a bit neater than that. Got this just a little bit higgledy higgledy at the moment. Okay, so kind of like that, but we're going to mount these up so that they are all, I mean, the hose is the, the focus, but I think the playing in also needs to be, because, yeah, she's playing. So I think that also needs to be popped up on dimensionals Otherwise, it kind of, I feel like it fades a little bit into the background. So I'm going to use my um, dimensionals just to put on the back of those. And we'll just see what that's going to look like. I think that'll be good. I hope so. I didn't try it with dimensionals yet, so I hope that it'll look good. Let's see, will that be? Yeah, I think that'll be good. All right, so just pop a little dimensional onto the back of these and then we'll be able to line them up and um, stick them down. Has anybody else scrapbooked their pets? Let me know in the comment. And also too, if you have pets and they like to play, share with me what is their favorite game. I would love to know. Our little girl, she doesn't really play with toys, um, but she will play with the hose and she'll play um, any games that have anything to do with food. So we play chicken run out in the backyard. So I, I chuck bits of little tiny bits of chicken for her and she goes and finds them in the grass. She loves that. That's, that's her other favorite game. Um, and then she'll do, we've got little, um, doggy puzzles, little food puzzles. She loves to play with those and hunt out all of the, yeah, she's a real little hunter actually. Um, she just loves doing anything that involves food or hunting. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to stick down my first. Actually, I'm going to stick down. I think I'll stick down the hose first. So here we go. Hopefully, I'll get it nice and straight. All right, so just remove the, um, the paper backing to reveal the adhesive. And I might use my Take Your Pick tool to hold on to that, to get that positioned where I want it. All right, so I had the T about here and it was just at the top of that cloud. I need to move these other letters over for a minute while I just get this positioned. There we go. Try and get that nice and straight. Okay, there we go. So there's our T. Okay, next letter. So this is a little bit fiddly because they're so fine and, and it's a scrapbooking layout. So I'm trying to get them all nicely lined up. Trying to get them lined up nice and straight as much as possible. I'll go over a little bit more with that one to about there. Yeah, about there, I think. Oh, you need to measure with a ruler, Amber. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you probably would. We're, we're a little bit particular in this house, let's just say. We like to have things nice and level and straight and things like that. I would, I used to probably back in the day when I did do scrapbooking years ago, I probably would have used a ruler too, but you know, I'm just going for it today and hoping for the best, hoping that they are going on straight. I won't press them on too hard just in case I need to lift them back up. Okay, and then our E. Trying to make sure that I've got the spacing roughly the same. 
I mean, look, it's, it's a handmade project. If they're not perfect, it's okay. There we go. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. I'm hoping that I've got them straight. <laughs> now that you say that, Amber, are you making me nervous? That's four and a half centimeters down from the top. And that one is, oh, that one's just over four and a half. Wait, did I get that really crooked? Oh no, that one's not four and a half. It's 4.4. 4. 4. And what's that one? That one is four. Oh no, that one's 4.4 4 as well. Yay, I did it. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. So now you're making me think I need to measure the next one. I don't know. I think, well, look, if I lay, what if I lay the ruler across here like this? And hope that I've got that laid straight. What do you reckon? If I lay it against those ones, I should have my grid paper underneath, shouldn't I? That would help. And then I could line it up with my grid paper. Okay, our H is going in this cloud here, about there. Oh, I'm putting my arm over those photos. I'm probably gonna get ink up my arm. I'll just move them while I do this. Uh, this one is going here about there I'll put this first one down and I'll measure that oh Amber said I didn't say that to make you measure it doesn't look crooked oh good okay <laughs> you made me nervous Amber all right so let's measure that one from the top now and just check to see if we've got that one at 4.4 4.4 Oh, I can't see in that light. That light is just in the wrong spot. It looks about right. I think it's about right. Might be a tad higher, but I think it's okay. I think we'll get away with it, hey? All right. Now, oh. And she stops talking as she lines it all up. <laughs> when, of course, I was laying them out last night, I could line them up really well because I didn't have any adhesive um, revealed yet. And so uh, you've got to be careful with your S because if you're trying to hold that to put that down, you can actually stretch that out of shape. So because of all the curly, curly parts. So just be careful with that. Use your take your pick tool if you've got one. Um, yeah, so I was easily able to slide them all around on the on the layout, but of course, once you reveal that adhesive, it's not so easy. So there we go, and then our last letter, and I think the other ones up the top will be so much easier. Look, if you are worried about putting things straight, lettering straight on your project, a great thing to do is to purposely put them at angles, and then that way, it doesn't matter if they are crooked. Nobody will know because they would intentionally then be at an angle. So there's just a little tip. I've actually done that in the past before when I've been concerned. Oh, hang on a minute. I've got the bottom of my E a bit stretched out. Um, yeah, sometimes I'm, I've purposely put things at angles if I'm worried about getting them straight. There we go. That's not too bad. I think that's not too bad. That'll do. All right. The hose. We've got our hose sitting down and it looks so much better now with it mounted up rather than just having it um, flat. Okay, let's put our paper backings in the bin and we'll do our playing in now. That one, these ones shouldn't be as hard to, so we'll just remove our backings. These ones shouldn't be as hard to put in place, I don't think. I hope. <laughs> All right, so this one's going just to the outside of this cloud and it's going about, yeah, about there above the T. So I just want to line up the edge of that with the T. In fact, I'll put it, I think, here. Yep. There we go. All right. And put a little space in between. Now, of course, this, because these are smaller, 
the spacing in between these are not going to be the same as the spacing of the hose because um, you know they're a different size to begin with so these are much easier to handle because they're a solid shape and if you wanted to you could put these at angles if you were worried about getting them lined up straight I'm not going to fuss too much about it I think they'll be fine they might not be perfect but They'll be fine. Well, did that one go crooked? That one went a little bit crooked. Oops. Let's see if I can get that one back. Let's wriggle that one around. There we go. And then G. Oh, that one's a bit, a little bit further out. Let's put that in a little bit closer. There we go. Okay, so we've got our playing. I think my spacing is a little bit different to my original, but that's okay. It's all good. And then we're going to leave a little bit of a gap because we've got a new word, in. And our in is going to sit out a little bit further from the word, the hose. But that's okay. That's how I designed it. I mean, ideally, it would have been good to have that centered exactly underneath, but hey, it's okay. As I said, it's my first one in 15 years. <laughs> so you've got to give me a little bit of grace today. Um, oh, Dimity said she forgot to say that Sparky loves the ball. He's, he's, only, he's only one. I have lots of them. Oh, that's his only game that he likes? Okay. He doesn't touch or chase the children's balls. He also likes to lay in your lily pond. Oh, he likes the water. Oh. Oh, there you go. Um, so he's got a special ball. And it's good that he doesn't touch the children's balls. He only plays with his own. Um, is it a tennis ball or is it like a bouncy ball or what sort of ball does he like to play with? We, Callie used to play with balls. We used to call them ballies. She used to play with her little, she had a little tiny tennis ball. She did like to try and pick up the big ones too, but she had little, little tiny um, tennis balls that have squeakies in them. And she used to play with them a little bit when she was little, but she won't play with them anymore. I've, we've, got, um, we've got some tennis balls still hanging around out in the backyard. And I do pick them up and throw them for her to try and entice her to play. But she just looks at them and goes, yeah, no, I'm not chasing that thing. <laughs> so, all right. So then we're having these lined up like this. And then uh, we've got our little butterflies. So the little butterflies are going to be, I'm just going to, I'm probably just going to adhere them flat, I think. Um, I'm, I might even, I mean, they are going into a scrapbooking album, so they'll probably get a little bit pressed down, but I'm just going to give them a little bit of a curl on their wings, just on the tips of those wings. So just give them a little bit of a lift. And I've got five butterflies here. So do you want to tell everyone, um, Dimity, what, what breed of dog Sparky is? I've met Sparky online. I haven't met Sparky in person, but I've met Sparky online. He's beautiful. But he likes to bark like Callie, doesn't he? Callie's a bit of a woofy. And um, I think Sparky is a bit too. They like to protect their homes, don't they? Um, now, one thing I was just going to check, I just wanted to see. Uh, yes, I just wanted to see in the annual catalogue where you've got all of the adhesives and it, There'll be um, details in the online store as well for each product. If you click on the product, you can look at the information about that product. So the multi-purpose liquid glue is acid free. So it is safe to use on your projects. Just bear in mind that you don't want to overuse it because if you get any over, um, over gluing, it does stay tacky. So you don't want it sticking 
in you know to the plastic when you go to put it in um, the fine tip glue pen is also acid free which is great to know because I was going to use that for the little um the little flowers so they're both acid free um, stamp and seal is also acid free of course the tear and tape is acid free um, the stamp and seal plus is acid free um, so yeah and do, 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 do. let's just check the foam adhesive sheets they are acid free i should have checked that before shouldn't i but they are acid free the dimensionals are acid free so they're all acid free so they're all safe to use even the mini glue dots are also acid free so they're all safe adhesives that you can use in your um, scrapbooking and memory keeping okay all right so let's glue on some of these little butterflies oh before i do the butterflies I wanted to show you something else so I have taken I wanted what I wanted to do on my layout was I also wanted to represent the spray of the hose and I thought what can I use and something that popped into my mind very early on when I was thinking about this layout was we have this awesome silver metallic mesh ribbon and I haven't used it a lot but it is great for different types of projects and I have seen people use it and tie it in a knot. And when they tie it in a knot, it sort of makes it sort of fray out a little bit, um, which is really great. And I thought, okay, can I use that to represent the water spray of the hose? So what I did, I'll show you. I'll do it with a piece and I'll show you. So I took my sharp paper snips and I cut a piece. Now, as you cut this, you might get little fibres dropping so just be aware of that because it is a mesh um, it's very fine um, and then what I did is I trimmed the ends actually I'll just move my layout aside for a moment I trimmed the ends because I didn't want it to be squared off like that at the end I don't know if you can see let me grab a piece of paper hold it on a piece of paper so you can see Okay, see how the ends are very sort of squared off because that's how I've cut it. I didn't want them to look like that. I want them to look like they're spraying out like water. So I wanted to separate them. So I cut downwards to separate some of those fibers. You could also use a metallic trim um, if you separated the fibers of the metallic, metallic trim and had several fibers of that. That would probably work in the same sort of way. Um, so I separated those and then what I did is I gathered it in at one end. Now you might find you need to snip down a little bit deeper just so those, those pieces sort of fray out from each other a little bit more. And then I put a bit of, so then I gathered it in like that and then I got a bit of that tear and tape and I added some tear and tape on that folded end. I'll show you just in case you want to do it too. So just get it, so you get it sitting nicely how you're, how you're happy with it. And then you just add a little bit of tear and tape. You could use a glue dot, but because I'm putting it into an album, I wanted to be able to move it around. So, so I wasn't sure where I was gonna put it yet. So I just put a little bit of tear and tape on it. And now when I lay that down, see how that sort of sprays out a little bit like water from the hose. Sort of like that. So I created um, three of these last night that I want to use on my layout. And I'm going to tuck these in behind some of the photos and have that water spray coming out from some. These ones are a little bit shorter. So this one was a little bit longer, so it's going to, you know, sit a bit differently. These ones are a little bit shorter, but I love how they see how they sort of look like they spread out a bit now um yeah so we're going to um add those so i'll show you where we're going to add those and see how you get all the little bits of fibers so just be aware of that maybe when you're cutting it cut it on some scrap paper that you can just then tip the little fibers into the bin all right so let's bring our layout back in and we'll add the we'll add the hose the water from the hose so glad she's asleep right now because yes she'd be driving amber crazy if she kept heard me keep saying that all right, so we're going to have one of the sprays coming out from this photo, from the corner of this photo up towards there. 
we're going to have another one coming out at the top of this photo up here like that that's sprayed out oops make sure that tape is tucked down so you can't see it and then this one I'm going to have down here coming out from behind this one but I'm not going to stick any of them down yet because as I said I'm not sticking these photos I've got to get them properly printed um, but that's kind of how it will look with the the water spray this one's a little bit harder to see because you've got the garden you've got all the flowers here but when you're seeing it in person like you can actually see it a bit better um, okay so we've got that now we still need to add our sentiment labels I'm going to show you how to create those but we'll add our um, little butterflies and I will adhere those because I know where I want them so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue just on the edge near the body of the butterfly and I'm going to put one up here near the title and these little butterflies are going to be flying at an angle I'm going to put another one let's get a little bit more glue again being careful not to use too much of this glue because you don't want that oozing out onto your layout I'm going to put another one up here And then when you die cut these, you have some flying in the opposite direction as well, which is great. I love it when you get that with, um, especially with butterflies and other little critters like that. And we're gonna have one here. And then we're going to have one down here. This one looks like he's gonna land on the, over on the flowers there. And then we're gonna have one more up the top above the um, photo strip. Up here near the clouds. Oops, oh, make sure I put that back down on the right spot. I had a bit of glue on my finger then, it's stuck to that. There we go. Alrighty. Okay, so there's our little butterflies and they've got their little wings shaped. So their little wings are sitting up. Okay, um, now with the, the labels, I wanna show you how to create the sentiment, or not the sentiment labels, the journaling labels. All right, so what I did, um, these are the labels here that I've created. Okay, so I've got the date and I've got couldn't be happier because that is just that just depicts her favorite it, this being her favorite thing okay you can see how happy she is playing in the hose so these little labels are going to be slipped under the edges of the the um, photos but I want to show you how to create them and we've got to add our little flowers too all right so I'll just move this over to the side I'll bring in my scrap pieces of cardstock we're going to use for this the, oh, the other thing is too, we're going to add uh, something else that I didn't add last night, but I thought of it today. I wanted to add some more bling. And I thought, what can I add that's not too bulky, that's not gonna damage the layout or, la or damage any of the other layouts. And I thought of the for, for everything fancy sequins, which I thought, oh, they would be perfect because they're not too bulky and they're in the perfect colors. So we've got the blues, the greens, there's also the pinks in there too. But of course, we won't be using pink because there's no pink in our layout, apart from Callie's collar. So we're gonna use some of these to put in the, um, the grass and the sky as well. All right, so to create my labels, um, wait, I had some cardstock already cut for this. Where is that? Oh, here it is, here. Again, using my, um, my scraps. Okay, so we want, two pieces so we'll take two pieces out I've actually already got one here that's already started oh, I was going to show you with the butterflies how to ink them but I think you kind of got the idea with me doing the um, the title you kind of get how I did that um, now I, I did some of these last night and I've got these extra little bits that I punched out when I was punching these lab punching the corners of these labels I'm going to use them. I'm going to show you how to use them. 
um, to help you. All right. So I took a piece of cardstock. Um, I can't remember the length of it now. I didn't actually write that down. Let me see. What length is that? So that's seven and a half centimetres. All right. So take a piece of cardstock, seven and a half centimetres, which I don't think I've actually... Um, I don't think I have measured these yet. Did I did I cut these the right size? No, I didn't. Okay. So we'll cut these down to seven and a half centimeters. Doesn't matter too much about the height at this point. Okay. We just want the seven and a half centimeter length. I mean I could because I have got the length here. So let's see. I mean the, the height. What did I have? The three centimeters. Okay, so let's cut this to three. So now it's seven by three centimeters. If that's, that's better. Okay, that's one. We'll keep this piece because we use that for another project using all of our scraps today. Three. Now it doesn't matter if it's not exactly three because we're going to tuck it under our photo. So it doesn't matter if it's a little bit um, higher or you probably even get away with it being a little bit narrower too. Oh, there's another scrap. Let's keep that one too. Oh, there's another one. Let's keep that one too. All right. So we've got our pieces seven by three centimeters. Um, what we're going to do to begin with is we'll bring in our, our very best trio punch. Okay. We've got these three awesome um, punches in one, one that cuts off the corner one that gives you this decorative edge like I've got on this one and then you've got a little notch for threading ribbon so the first thing I did was to punch my first corner okay which was the far corner it's the right hand corner so we're going to put the top right hand corner into the punch and just press down straight just press straight down don't try and press down on the corner just press down straight Okay, and that gives us that shape. That's the shape that we want. Okay, now to do the other corner, I actually, what I did last night is I punched one corner, I stamped my sentiment, and then I lined it up. So if you want to know how to, I'll show you this one first, and then I'll show you how to work out where to measure your cardstock. So I already know, because I've measured it in advance, so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to, so this is the piece that punched out. And if you get confused, this is what you do. This is the piece that's punched out. That's the shape that you want to mirror on the other end. So to mirror that on the other end, okay, because if we, if we, if we put our cardstock in this way, it would punch the opposite. Yeah, it would punch with that curvy bit at the top there and that straighter bit edge would be down here so the trick with this punch to get to get the shape exactly mirrored on the other side okay so we punched that way we're going to now flip our cardstock over that way and we're going to slide it in along that slot right up to the end and punch and there we have the same the same detail on both sides okay because it's not an um, symmetrical shape if we put the cardstock in and punched it the same way on both sides you'd get um, a reversed image if that makes sense if, if you have this punch try it you'll see what I mean all right now if you're unsure of the length of the piece of cardstock that you need for instance let's grab let's just grab another scrap I'll punch the first end okay great that's the direction that I want then I stamp my image lining it up with that first side and then that piece that you, that you punched out what you then do is flip that over so that you've got the the um, the design around the right way you're going to line that up so pretend that I've stamped my image in there okay you're going to line that up this little piece where you see that straight edge put a pencil mark with your pencil and then trim your cardstock there that is then going to be the right length when you put that into your punch to punch your punch your corner out it's the same with your take your pick punches oh sorry the 
picker punches, same thing. Those little off cuts, I showed it the other day actually, if any of you were watching, um, you use that to, um, yeah, use those little off cuts to line up your cardstock and that'll show you where to trim it and then you'll know you'll get the exact right length. Sounds confusing. It's not really when you do it. Um, this one's a little bit easier because it just is punching the corner, not punching out the whole end. All right, so we'll do the same. We're going to punch first the top right-hand corner. Put that in and punch. Flip it over. Put it in and punch. There we go. And then we've got a beautiful label. Okay. And there you've got all your little off cuts. You can use them as your little measuring sticks. <laughs> um, oh, Callie's awake with itches from playing on the hose yesterday. Yes, she does get allergies, unfortunately. She has grass allergies and a whole heap of other allergies. Um, and, yeah, she's been a little bit itchy. So, oh. Um, Dimity said that Sparky has tennis balls. Oh, but they only last about, oh, tennis balls only last three seconds. Okay, so you get special balls from Target. They're a thick rubber one and they last for ages. They're about $5. Oh, awesome. He's a German shepherd. He barks when he needs to go outside or playing with anyone or if someone tries to break in or when she's on Zoom. Yes. <laughs> he likes to he likes to let everybody know that he's there when, when, um, when we're there on Zoom. <laughs> All right, now let me show you how I stamped these images because I did a bit of masking. Okay, so we're going to use, um, we'll do our date first. So we're going to use the Dates to Remember stamp set. Now with this one, I've already taken it out. It's a photopolymer stamp set. I'll just grab my stamps here. Okay, now, with this one, with the dates, this one is for creating calendars and, and using dates on, on your projects. With the calendar, it's in one big strip. So what you do is you actually can move this on your ink pad, depending on the day of the week that your month starts, the month that you're creating, and depending on what year it is, um, you just move this on your ink pad and stamp up the portion of, it's very clever actually how they designed this. You stamp the portion of the, the dates that coordinate with your month. Um, because obviously they start, you know, the first of the month will be on a different day of the week every month, unless you're in February and March, which are the same. But then of course we've got more days in the month for March. Now you can all, always mask off the ones that you don't want as well, which is what we're going to do today because we are just using 23. Now 23 is right in the middle of the stamp and I don't want to get any of the others inked. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. The, da the months, they're easy. They're just on a single stamp. So that's pretty easy. All right. Um, you've also got in this stamp set, you've got a few little sentiments. You've got the days of the weeks. Um, and then you've got these little, these cute little icons here that you can use. These are also great, not only for making calendars, but um, for your journaling. They're also great for in your planners, diaries, that sort of thing as well. Um, yeah, and these are the little tails for your balloons, in case you were wondering. But you could use them in other ways too, I guess. And this little circle is for circling dates. If you're making a card for somebody's birthday and you want to put their birthday on the card, then you can circle the date with that little stamp. So it's a really cool stamp set. All right, so let's get on to creating our, our date label for our project. All right, so I'm using this one here. I'm going to stamp February and I'm gonna stamp it up towards the top. And I hope I get it straight because I actually haven't put it straight on my block which would have been better if I had have repositioned that. But anyway, oh, good, I did. Yay, look at that. All right, so that's our February. Now, with the 23, I am going to mask off with my washi tape all the other letters. Now, if you've got wide washi tape, that's great. I actually do have some wider washi tape. Let's use some of that. I might use a combo of wide and narrow. So my 23 is right here, right here in the middle. So I'll use this washi tape 
to mask off the row beside it, okay? And the row on the other side of that. Okay, and the number below it. Being careful that that piece of washi tape doesn't go over your number 23 and the ones above it as well. Let's go that way too. Okay, so we've just got the 23. Now, if you're worried about all of these other letters, you can mask all of, uh, sorry, numbers. You can mask all of those off as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sneakily ink that up on the very edge of my ink pad. I might need to put that washi tape down a little bit lower. There we go. Now, of course, it's washi tape, so it doesn't stick really well to non-porous surfaces such as blocks, but it'll, it'll do the job. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the upper corner of my ink pad, not down here because you've got the well and you've got that extra plastic here in the way. But I'm going to use that upper corner that's near the edge and I'm going to try and ink up just my 23 and trying not to get those other letters, uh, letters, numbers. So I'm just inking up on the very corner there, trying to avoid getting ink anywhere else on the stamp, okay? So now my 23's got ink. You can see where the rest of the ink went. I perhaps potentially got a little bit of ink on this number here. So I'll take my chamois while I can still see that and I'll just wipe that just to be sure. And then we're gonna remove all this washi tape. And we wanna work fairly fast because you want that ink still to be wet on your number 23. Last night I was working with thinner washi tape. It was much quicker to came, come off and it all came off in one piece, which was great. All right, and then you need to line up your 23 because obviously this is the year, 23, next to your February. So I'll try and line that up. There we go. February 23. So it's just a little tiny 23. And that's okay. If you wanted to, you could do the 20, 23, but I wasn't brave enough to do that. I thought I might muck that up. So I just thought I'd do 23. Now, as I mentioned, I'll leave that ink pad out. We're going to use that in a minute. As I mentioned earlier, um, I don't have a balmy blue stamp and write marker because mine dried out, but I have a, I have a um, Tahitian tied one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do, you know, the little doot when you do the, the, the year in short and you just put like a, what is it called? It's a, you'll know when I do it. I'm just going to put that just in front of the 23. Now it's not exactly the right color, but you get away with it because it's only such a tiny little amount like that. Okay. So February 23, if I was using a lot of this, with the balmy blue you'd probably notice a big difference in the color and then what i did was i just inked around the edges again of course because that's what i love to do and that also then matches in with the um, title and also the butterflies that were also inked so it just brings everything together now the little dude is a slightly different blue but it's only such a small amount it doesn't matter okay so that's our little date label, and we're going to pop that in under the side of our photos. I'll show you that. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. All right, now with our, um, so we'll pop that star, stamp set away. For the little journaling label, I'm using the new Irresistible Blooms. This is one of the brand new stamp sets in the online exclusives. So beautiful. I've been using this one a lot over the last um the last couple of weeks or last few weeks um, so if you haven't seen my videos feel free to go back and watch my videos either here on Facebook or on YouTube using the irresistible blooms and the whole hello irresistible suite they are beautiful beautiful pro products all right now I've already taken out the stamp I'm going to use I'm using this one couldn't be happier to have a friend uh, to have you as my friend but I only want to use couldn't be happier I mean, you could leave the eye in, I couldn't be happier, but I just wanted, wanted couldn't be happier. So we're gonna do a little bit of masking again. Now this, 
This one is a cling stamp, so you, it's the red rubber stamp. Oh, my February. I think I didn't clean my February. Better clean. Better clean my February. Okay, so we're going to do the same sort of thing. We're going to mask off again. This time I'm going to use finer washi tape because the image on this one is much finer. Oh, sorry, the font on this one is much finer. So we'll put a piece along here. Now you've got to be careful when you do this that you're not putting the washi tape over that upper part of the sentiment that you want to be stamping. Okay, you've got to be careful here with the happy, the happier, because the peas come down low. So you've got to be careful not to put your washi tape over that. All right, so I'll put one more bit of washi tape there. And then I'm going to use another piece of washi tape to mask off the word friend because it's a bigger word, bigger font, sorry, on that word. So what I do is I just use my nail to tuck that down. If you don't have nails, you can use your take your pick tool just to tuck that down in around those um, other words. And we want to mask off the word I. There we go. All right. Okay, so that's how we do it. And then we'll ink that up. And then you need to remove. So make sure you get ink right to the bottom of those words because you've got the washi tape there. It's going to want to pick up the ink. All right, and then carefully remove that all that washi tape. Being careful not to get ink on your fingers or have your baby, baby wipes nearby. Um, might have got a little bit just on there. Oh, no. All right, and then we're going to stamp. We've already created our label, and we're going to stamp that in the center there. So we're going to line up our couldn't be happier. Now, when I did this the first time, hopefully I get this lined up okay. When I did this the first time, I stamped it first and then I created the label around it as I showed you with that technique before. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Um, of course, I've already created one ahead of time anyway, so I knew if I botched that one up, it was okay. <laughs> so I already had one. But yeah, if you're worried about lining that up, do your stamping first and then create your label as I showed you before which is what I did last night, actually. Um, then you ink around the edges the same way as you've done that. I won't take the time to do that because I've already got one that I created earlier. Okay, and now we're ready to adhere those to our project. So there's our labels. Oh, wait a minute, I'll get all my extra little bits of cardstock out of the way. There we go. Okay, again, lining that up with my cardstock, my 12 by 12 cardstock layer. One thing I did notice with the cardstock is it seemed to be just a little tad wider than the designer series paper. Now, if you're putting it into the pocket of a um, scrapbooking album, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, but if you wanted to trim it down just a tad, you could. All right, so now with the label, I'm going to be tucking that one and adhering that under the bottom left-hand corner of my main photo. And then with the journaling, that's going to go on the bottom, underneath the bottom of my um, film strip or photo strip, like that, okay? Now, as I said, I'm not gonna attach them right now because I've gotta get these photos reprinted professionally. All right, now for some bling. We've got these gorgeous little flowers. Wait, let me find the packet. We've got these gorgeous little loose daisy embellishments that are part of the Rain or Shine suite. These are so gorgeous. They're sort of like, um, I think they're sort of made of rubber or something like that. They feel kind of rubbery and they're in yellow and white and they're in several different sizes. So we're going to use some of those just on our... Um, photos. So I'm going to put one on the bottom corner of each of my photos and I will attach them to my um, final photos when I get them printed and I'm going to attach them with some fine tip glue 
because they are very tiny and I don't want to accidentally have any of the multi-purpose liquid glue oozing out from underneath that if I accidentally add a bit too much because it will stay tacky, whereas this will actually dry clear and won't be tacky. All right, so I'm going to add one to the bottom left-hand corner of each photo. And then on the main photo, I'm going to put three. So I've got two of the large ones and one of the little teeny tiny ones. I'm just going to add them on the bottom corners. Bottom corner, I should say, like that down in the corner. Okay, just to tie in the photo, the flowers from the, um, the paper. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this one up just a little bit higher just a tad higher that's going to go up there like that there we go the reason i'm just making sure that i've got that at the right height is because i'm about to stick some sequins down and i want to make sure they go into the right spot so that'll be tucked down this one is so that's that's lined up pretty well um, now the sequins I am going to glue right now because they can stay in place. Just This one's going to go up a little bit higher, up towards the clouds a little bit more. And we'll just move that sentiment label up. There we go. Okay, make sure I didn't get that ink. All right, so now I'm going to use some of the... Um... Oh, hey, Jenny, how are you going? Great to have you here. So we're going to use some of the For Everything fancy sequins okay there's three packets in there of the sequins we've got the pink ones which we're not using today and then we've got the blue and the green now i've already pulled out some of the green ones that i wanted to use they're sort of these more opaqueish ones and i've got some blue ones as well so i'm going to add the green ones to the grass so i might need to move that up a little bit higher there we go and we'll tip those out. I just pulled some out ahead of time because I thought they would just save time. These are sort of like an opaque colour, but they are a really, um, really pretty colour and they match, match with the grass. So I thought I'm gonna, I wanted to sprinkle some of them on the grass. Wasn't quite sure where yet, but let me get my take a pick tool and my tweezers because I think I'm going to use my putty end of my take your pick tool to pick those up and I'll need the assistance of my tweezers to place them so there we go so we just have to work out where we want to place them and then I can um, glue them down look there's so many you could really just scatter them I think anywhere and they'd be great like it's just to add a little bit of extra bling to the the project because you know I love a bit of ribbon and bling as you all know love my ribbon and bling how was your weekend Jenny did you do anything exciting on the weekend so as you can see we are creating a scrapbooking layout today with a very special little girl <laughs> Callie made an appearance at the beginning of the video um, to say hello to everybody Jenny so you'll have to go back and watch the uh, the replay later to to see Callie so we can just do a scattering of these I find it hard to do a, a um, like a messy scatter my scatters always end up too too neat and tidy need to learn how to just you know what would be the best way is to just hold a whole handful of them above your project and just drop them <laughs> and stick them where they land <sighs> that would be i don't think i could do that but yeah there you go so just scattering these along the bottom these are really pretty and we've got the grass up here too in the middle so you can put some up in there as well oh we had two on top of each other there just kind of don't want them to be too sort of in line with each other or let's pop some up the side here and on this side too nearly nearly got them all I've got a few more here
one down there and I think we need to move this one that one's in the wrong spot yeah and let's pop another one over here so there we go so we've got a little bit of a a splattering I kind of feel like these ones are a little bit too well spaced out so let's just move them a little bit might move that one over to here yep there we go yeah okay so we've got those there and then we've got the blue ones too we could put some of the blue ones in the sky I wasn't sure about that or there's the clear ones too the, um, well they're not really clear they're more sort of white whitish which would be great up in the sky and they kind of represent the clouds or they could represent the water spray as well maybe some of them under the water spray would be good too so yeah there's lots of different things that you can do to um add add some bling don't want those in line with each other um, but yeah we'll start with sticking the green ones and then we'll decide about the white ones i do like the white ones but they're a little bit harder to see to pick up and put some up in the up in the clouds There's some little sparkles up there has anybody got these the um, for everything fancy sequins they're really beautiful and they're great for shaker cards too. If you love making shaker cards, these are a great embellishment for that as well. So see, you can just keep adding them. You don't want to kind of add too many and go like over the top. Even in the clouds would be nice to have a little, a little sparkle in some of the clouds perhaps. Maybe that one there and one over here. Yeah, they look nice in the clouds, actually. Yeah, I think I like them in the clouds more than just scattered. Let's put them, put some in the clouds. There we go. Oh, we've got one more up the top there. Let's put one up here in this big cloud. There we go. You might not be able to see that because I just had, was working off camera a little bit up the top there. Yeah, so that's, they're pretty cool. Might move those ones. Yeah, I think I just like them in the clouds. What do you think? Do you like that? Do you think they look cute? Maybe that one down there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll use those white ones just in the clouds and the green ones can be scattered amongst the grass. All right, so we'll just adhere those and then that's the last step. And then later this week, I'll have to get out and get those photos properly printed. Oh, my silly printer. So annoying. So, so annoying. I was so excited last night to um, have my layout completed or like to get it completed today. And then when I realized that that silly printer wasn't um, working properly, it's very annoying. Very annoying. I'm going to use my silicon craft sheet just because I want to just squeeze a little bit of that glue out, make sure that that is running okay, um, and also be sure that um, if it starts to run a bit too much, I've got something I can dab it off on. There we go. It does run quite quickly, the... Um, the fine tip glue so you want to because it's a very runny sort of glue so you don't want to squeeze it too far uh, too much you just want a little tiny dab for each of these sequins so does anybody have these nobody's commenting does that mean nobody has these sequins these are from the annual catalog you can find them in the embellishment section in my online store um 
and they're in the embellishments in the annual catalog, but they're really beautiful. We've used them for quite a few um, projects and some classes and things like that. Love using sequins for classes. Um, in fact, sequins are a great embellishment because you get so many of them in the pack, especially when you get the loose ones like this that you can just adhere. Um, and they go so far. You get so many projects out of them. And of course, then you've got them as well for shaker cards. So if you like making shaker cards, I actually haven't made a shaker card for a long time. It's something I probably need to do again. If there's any projects that you would like to see me make, please let me know in the comments. I've got another um, fancy fold card that um, Dimity, who's here with us today, actually showed us in our team gathering on Saturday how to make. So I thought I might share that one in the next couple of weeks. I've just made a prototype. I haven't actually made a whole project yet, a whole card yet, but I've got a I've got a project a prototype so I know how to create the, the fancy fold. Um yeah, are there any other types of projects that you would like to see me make or demonstrate? Let me know in the comments. I love having suggestions. I love to create things that you want to see. I've got um, I've got some other projects as well. There, Amber's been creating actually, so she's been making some beautiful projects. So I've got a couple of those that I can share as well, and show you how to create some really fun ones. Oops, one of them is using this suite. And she made a really beautiful card yesterday. So I might I might demonstrate that one for you as well, because it's a really beautiful, um, really beautiful suite. And remember too, I've got the class coming up with this suite. So I've got a fancy fold class coming up using this suite. Whoops. We're going to be making four projects in the class. Sorry, you probably can't even see me doing that because I've got the camera right down low. Um, we're going to be making four beautiful fancy folds. And one of them is one that I hadn't seen before until this class. Um, one of them or two of them? One being two of them, actually. One of them's really interesting. I've not seen it anywhere. Oh, my glue's running a bit much now. Um, yeah, I've not seen it anywhere before um, I discovered it for this class. And um, yeah, it's really cool. So that class is coming up. The registration form is in the comments of this video, but I'll also put it in the description of the video, both here on Facebook and over on YouTube as well. Um, so you can click on that to go and have a look at what's included in the class. You get products um, for the class and you'll also have leftover products for other projects that you can create as well because um, there'll be there'll be plenty of leftover to create other things too. Um, you get all of the card kits to create the projects and you get the PDF tutorial. Um, yeah, anything I've forgotten to mention, Amber, if you're still there? Uh, yeah, it's a really beautiful really beautiful class so four different fancy fold cards using this suite of products they're beautiful so check that out and we'd love to have you come and join us if you would like to participate in that class it is not an in-person class just so you know it's a um, class by mail or class in the box some people call it so you will get all of the supplies sent to you and the PDF tutorial. So you can create the projects in your own home, at your own pace, in your own time, um, and you won't feel rushed or anything like that. So, yeah. So be sure to check that out. Oh, where did my sequin go? Oh, it turned upside down. There we go. So we've done the ones down in the grass. We'll do the ones up in the clouds. Whoops. There you go. Yeah, I think these look really good in the clouds, actually. I like that. Oh, I dropped it. Oh, that might have been too much glue. Ah. Okay, you slide over there onto the glue. 
that's okay. That glue is going to dry glossy anyway. This, um, do you remember the old glossy accents that used to be around years ago? You can actually use this glue in the same way as the glossy accents. It takes a long time to dry, however. You kind of need to leave it several hours to dry. But if you want to make anything shiny and glossy and give it a bit of um, a bit of height, a bit of texture, then the fine tip glue pen is a great one to use for that. So that's why I'm not worried too much if this oozes because it is going to leave it glossy. Is that going to stick? Yeah. Doop. Little tiny doop of glue in the clouds. Oops. Okay, we are nearly done. We are nearly done. So I will, um, I'm going to put this project on my blog and um, you'll be able to see the finished project over there. Whoops. Um, and I will, yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably. I'm not sure when I'll post it on my blog because I'm going to need to get these photos properly printed. And I don't really want to photograph it before I do that. So, I mean, I photographed it just for my own purposes for today, but to put it up actually up on my social media. I don't know. I'll see how the photos turn out. I'll take some more, like I'll try to take some more good photos and see how they turn out. Now that I've got these mounted... When I was photographing it last night, I didn't have the um, photos mounted on the cardstock, and so they were bowing and you know playing playing up a little bit. But now I've got them mounted on the cardstock. It might look okay if I photograph it as it is now before I get those proper photos printed, and then when I get the photos printed, I can just add them and then take more photos. All right, I think we've got those all glued down now. Hopefully I haven't missed any. We've got a few down here in the grass. They look really great down here in the grass. I'll hold it up in a minute and show you. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that's really cute. All right. Now with the um, the liquid, uh, the sorry, the fine tip glue, you've got to make sure that you cap it as soon as you finish using it. Don't leave it sitting out because it dries really quickly in the tip. So it's a very fine tip. And you've got to get that needle down into that tip so that it... Um, doesn't get stuck so yeah check out the for everything fancy sequins they are great to have in your stash all right i'm gonna hold this up to the camera to show you all the bling at the bottom my photos might move but i'm not sure i'm gonna sort of see where i can get it under the camera <laughs> can you see the bling in the grass there there you go now you can see it doesn't that look cute so blingy because you know we've got to have ribbon and bling and we've got our ribbon and we have to have a bit and it was blingy and I thought oh well that's going to be ribbon and bling and see how we've got those ones up in the clouds as well you see those there upper corner so there you go so there is my finished project well finished in in terms of as far as I can without getting those photos printed but that's what it's going to look like and those little labels, they'll be ad adhered to the back of the photos so that they um, stay put. Yeah, they'll be adhered there. So there you go. What do you think? Do you like it? Um, oh, you have a little girl who wants to say goodbye to everyone before I finish. Okay, bring her down. I will um, flip the camera back up so our little girl who featured today, our little Kelly, can say goodbye to you all as well. So bear with me one moment and I'll flip the camera up. Um, here we go. Just cover that up so I don't make you all dizzy. I'll pop that back up and flip this down. There's a few little transitions and things that I need to do to get the camera back in the right spot because I have um, shelves right in front of me. So, um, yeah, so the shelves are right in front of me. So there's only certain 
ways that I can do my setup because otherwise the shelves are in the way. There we go. <clears throat> so I think little Callie is on her way to us. Here she comes. Hello, puppy girl. Do you want to come up? Do you want to see what mummy made? Come and say hello. Well, come and say goodbye to the front. You want to come up? Oh, she's she's telling me no. She doesn't want to come up. Do you want to come up? Puppies? Puppies? Come on. Hang on. I'll grab her. Just a sec. Come. 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 She's like, no. Come on. It's all right. It's all right. There we go. You want to come and say goodbye to everybody? Yeah. Here she is. Here's the real deal. The real girl, not just the photos. Let's tip that camera down a bit. There we go. Yeah, mummy's nearly finished now. Yeah, we're going to say goodbye to everyone. All oh, kisses. Thank you. Thank you for kisses. So, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed today's project. Something a little bit different. And, um, yeah, so hopefully I'll do a few more scrapbooking layouts from time to time. And um, probably some more of this little girl. And maybe of some of our trips as well. I'd really like to do some of our trips that we've done over the last, well, prior to COVID. So, yeah. But anyway, thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the project. It was a bit of a long one today. So thank you for those of you that stuck with me. And um, but I hope that you found some inspiration today um, in my scrapbooking layout that I created um, if you've got any questions or there's anything that I can help you with, please feel free to get in contact with me. If you need catalogues or you don't have a demonstrator and you'd like someone, um, you'd like a demonstrator here in Australia to look after you, I would love to be that person. So please let me know. Um, and if you've got any product questions or even if you've got any questions about joining my team, my beautiful crafting community, then, uh, then please let me know and I'd love to, um, to answer any of your questions. I'll be back again on Thursday morning um, at 11 a.m. That's the plan at the moment so far. I had to change it last week to 1 p.m. But um, at the moment, that's the plan. So I hope that some of you can join me or catch the replay. So I hope you have a cra great crafty week and I look forward to seeing you. Yes, I'm going to put you down on the floor in a minute. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Happy crafting, everyone. Bye. Yeah, we're going to go now. Yeah, mummy said bye. Yeah, because we're going to go now. Yeah, you want to get a treaty? Okay. Okay, let's finish.